Welcome back. Today we're going to have a look at three lights from a relatively new company called Fireflies. These are what I would call premium budget lights because they're all in the $40 to $80 range and you get a ton of premium components packed into a flashlight for that money. We will be looking at the PL7 quad emitter light, the EO7 7 emitter light, and the ROT66, which has nine LEDs. All of these lights to me feel very well made. They feel solid. We got good threads. The finish on them is nice. It's pretty sticky, kind of a matte. Um, like a matte style finish like I like and we get really good choices on our LEDs they all come with top shelf stuff including XPL high SST 20s or Nietzsche 219s the emitters are sitting on copper direct thermal path MC PCBs we got good low resistance springs and all of them come with that beautiful set of auxiliary LEDs in the front and in the switch. Now, all of these lights were sent to me by Neil's Gadgets for review, so I didn't pick my LEDs, but these are what I got in my lights. In the PL47, I got the XPL High 5000K, the EO7 came with XPL High 6500K, and the ROT66 came with the XPL High in neutral white. Now, both the EO7 and the PL47 come with, this is a 20, well, they don't come with it, but they fit a 21700 cell, the longer, wider, good high capacity. One thing to note about the length of these is I had the choice to either press fit them hard into my chargers or get creative. They also come with a pretty neat little adapter. This is an 18650. Um, it's, if you're using a, a flat top, you'll want that button thing in there. If you're using a button top cell that's longer, you just remove that little brass piece there from it. The PL47 also came with this head strap, which at first I thought was <laughs> a little dumb, and then I actually figured out how to use it. Um, you got to use the this clip with it, the, po the pocket clip. Just stick your light in there and then snap the pocket clip on like that. Now, moving to the ROT66, it is a 3 18650 battery size carrier. So the light is even smaller than my Ace Beam X80 GT. This carrier, uh, it's okay. It's not great. The, um, the springs in it seem good, but the thing I don't like about it is that... Unless you have flat top cells, they don't fit in there very well. This is not even a protected cell, and I really have to try way too hard to get that in there. There's no way you'll ever get protected cells in there. Let's talk about those optics. There was a day when using optics in a flashlight meant you were being cheap and taking shortcuts, but these are exquisite. These are some of, this is one of the best executions of using an optic in a flashlight I've ever seen. All three of them have a pretty uh, unique looking beam and they're all really soft, good smooth transitions. I absolutely love them. Using any one of the three of these lights, you can see wide, you can see far, and it's just amazing. I'm so impressed with what they've done here. Let's take a quick look at the user interface. I'm going to give you the short version right now, and then I'll show you some of the other stuff. I'll put that, uh, that at the end of the video. Right now, let's just see how the quick operation. Okay, so we go click for on, click for off. Notice too, look there, how we still get a lighted switch even when it's on. Easy to find in the dark, even if you're using moonlight. Awesome. Uh, press and hold for ramp, and it'll stop at the top there, and we can go back down. Um, 
if you want to go to turbo, like at the top, that's not turbo, that's high, you go double click. You can jump all the way to turbo. If you want to go to the blinky stuff, you go click, click, hold. And there's, uh, to switch through them, you know, candle, tactical strobe, you double click. That's actually just strobing so fast the camera can hardly see it. Double click. There's one we can see. That kind of stuff. One other little trick is if you want to change the ramp from on, you can go one, two, three, and that little flash just indicated we've changed, and now when we press and hold, you get a step-like ramp. And if you want to go back to the smoothie, just one, two, three. I went ahead and tested these lights in my setup. Now, if you get a little bit of a different number, don't worry about it. There's a lot that can affect this. These lights are basically direct drive, so ambient temperature and what battery you use is gonna have a profound effect on them. So, But here are the numbers that I got for these lights. Here's one thing. The one thing I really didn't appreciate about these lights is when I first got them, the temperature sensor was set so low that you basically didn't have a turbo. Even on the larger one of the three, the uh, ROT66, I had like a 14 second window. I mean, it, it fell from the turbo spot so fast I could hardly get the foil around the, the head of the light. It, it was ridiculous. And not only that, when I tempted it, it was not hot. So I did have to adjust the temperature sensor on these. And that's why I said at the end of the video, I'll show you how to navigate that menu. Uh, but first, why don't we go take a look at some beam shots. First up, the Firefly's headlamp. Now the EO7. Now the ROT66. Now about the temperature sensor and the rest of the user interface. Um, when I get a set of instructions that looks like this here that has all these pictures and lines and diagrams, I'm just like, oh, <laughs> I just, I'd rather it not be that way. And I'm not criticizing Toy Keeper, you know, she, she does a great job on this stuff. Plus I, I wouldn't criticize her because she, she could probably beat me up. You don't know. She might be tough. Um, but after about two hours of fooling around with them, I got it straightened out. And I'm going to tell you what I did so hopefully it doesn't take you two hours. Now I'm going to show you quickly how to just navigate this menu so you can do anything on it. If you Once you understand it, it's not too bad. 
Um, this box here is the stuff I showed you earlier, like how to switch from uh, the smooth ramp to the step ramp. So just ignore that for now. And let's look right here, because this is where we're going to start. We're in the off position. If you want to navigate to other groups to, to change things, this is where you start. And you see, you just follow the dotted lines. And notice that some of the dotted lines are different. Like this is a whole bunch of really thin dots, and then this is like larger dots, and then some of them are, some of these things are solid lines. So if we want to go from off to battery check, what we need to do is look up here and see what this line means. It means three fast clicks. Um, so what we do then, if we want to we want to navigate from off to battery check. That means we do our three flash clicks, one, two, three, and we're in battery check. We're right here. This next line right here, you got to watch out because there's a thick line and then there's a thin line. One fast click or two fast clicks these happen to be two fast clicks. So if I double click again, whoops, if I double click again, I go to the sunset, double click again, now we're in beacon, double click again, and we go to temperature, uh, temperature check, and it's blinking that out. Now is where we get into a little more trouble because it's this dotted line says other action. So we come down here to this box and we find out because we want to we want to change the thermal configuration, change the temperature sensor and we find out that this is other action for thermal for thermal config is four clicks. Looking below that, we see it says number one, current temperature, number two, temperature limit. And this is where I got into trouble because there's a key piece of information missing right there. Okay, and that's where I had to go back and find Toy Keeper's original documentation on this user interface and find out what current temperature even means. What And what that means is what temperature is it inside the room? You're, you're basically calibrating the sensor, you know, um, and it's in uh, degrees Celsius. So uh, in my shop, it was like 50 degrees. So I used like nine degrees Celsius or something. But basically what you do for the, f when you, after you open the window is you tell the light what temperature it is in the room. Then you tell it what temperature you want it to start dialing the current back at but subtract 30 degrees from that. Basically it starts at 30 degrees when you start clicking and you go up from there so if you want it to be at uh, 60 degrees Celsius when the temperature sensor kicks in you click 30 times. Once you get past uh, battery check and temp check and you're in thermal configuration, what'll happen is this will start to flutter really fast. While it's fluttering is when you want to start telling it what to do. While it's fluttering is while the, the program window is open. It's saying, okay, tell me what to do. From the off position, three clicks gives us battery check, double click to sunset, double click to beacon, double click to temp check and then after that we go four clicks to get to the thermal configuration. Okay right there one two three four five six seven eight nine and wait 
and when it starts fluttering again, now we do our 30. Okay, now 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, and so on until I'm going to do about 40 clicks ish and then stop. All right, now we're back in battery check, so we'll just click to go off. And doing this on all three lights, I was able to set the temperature until they actually got hot. You can set it really high and they'll get too hot even. I did just to see what I could do on the uh, ROT66. I set it really high and it ran three full minutes before the temperature sensor kicked on and when I picked like the tail cap was hot. So <laughs> so don't set it too high. Hey, if this video helps you, hit that like button. You know, give it a thumbs up. Uh, thanks for watching, guys. Good luck.